Hi guys. Well, it's about time. It has turned back into a gorgeous spring day here in paradise in the end times here in Garfield, Texas as the bright blue sunny skies begins to completely disappear into this milky white haze calls from good god 15 of these persistent contrails so we can kiss goodbye the uh, the the bright blue sky for another day uh, so anyway but it springtime has returned other than that and it is now Tuesday April 2nd 2019 so I have just had the great pleasure of uh, interviewing a wildlife biologist from Canada by the name of Dude, and that interview will be coming out in a couple of weeks on that other channel but uh, until then between now and then he turned me he sent me a link to this story which is right here on the mainstream media today from uh, the shithole country of Canada what's going on up there and as long as we're over there I'm just gonna go like right next door cause you can kind of roll it into one uh, we're gonna go to the shithole state of Alaska uh, which you know as far as the planet is concerned is all the same big ball of wax up there in the Arctic but before I dive into that get my two pairs of dollar glasses on I have the pleasant task of uh, thanking three people for finding it in their hearts and wallets to support what I do here on YouTube a uh, big thank you once again for the second time when in about a week thank you brother Mark Bell for your very kind GoFundMe donation and same to Sister Rosemary thank you very much Rosemary for that kind donation to my GoFundMe account and thank you Naveen for your contribution to my PayPal account so I do appreciate anyone who has ever found it in their hearts and wallets to support what I do here on YouTube and what I'm doing right now is bringing you the we are so fucked we're gonna have two we are so fucked headlines of the day now this is a guardian story about Canada uh, what is going on in Canada up here in early 2019 Canada is warming at twice the global rate new climate report finds <clears throat> Canada is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world a landmark government report has found warning that drastic action is the only way to avoid catastrophic outcomes this is Nancy Hamzawi assistant deputy minister for science and technology at environment and climate change Canada quote the science is clear Canada's climate is warming more rapidly than the global average and this level of warming effectively cannot be changed thank you the report le released late on Monday by environment and climate change Canada paints a grim picture of Canada's future in which deadly heat waves and heavy rainstorms become a common occurrence 43 government scientists and academics authored the peer-reviewed report while global oops 
while global temperatures have increased 0.8 degrees since 1948, and I'm not going to hit either button here, Canada has seen an increase of 1.7 C, more than double the global average. <clears throat> and in the Arctic, the warming is happening at a much faster rate of 2.3 degrees C, the report says. So the Arctic, at least the Canadian Arctic, and I'm pretty sure the Alaskan has already blown through the two degree bullshit target. Uh, about the only place that I'm hearing about it that I think that maybe has not blown through the target is somewhere out in the middle of the ocean. I was just talking to that guy from uh, Puerto Rico, which blew through the two degree target uh, last year. More and more places from Puerto Rico uh, to the Canadian Arctic have already left two degree C uh, in the dust as they continue to climb. While the increased warming in the Arctic is not yet fully understood, huh? Snow and ice do play a critical role in reflecting the sun's radiation and heat, but scientists say the retreat of glaciers and disappearing sea ice <clears throat> both contribute to a feedback loop of warming which is one of the factors contributing to Canada's disproportionate temperature increase. The report suggests the majority of warming felt in Canada and around the globe is the result of burning fossil fuels. Canada has already pledged to cut its emissions by 200 million tons by 2030. Uh-huh. A cornerstone of pretty boy Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's national climate strategy, largely through a federally mandated carbon tax and shuttering coal-fired power plants. You better believe uh, there, he, it has nothing to do with shutting down the uh, tar sands uh, oil facilities, which is the number one way that Canada is, is contributing to the collapse of a planet. Nowhere on the table is that fucking little hypocrite pretty boy is pulling out all the stops to ramp up the tar sands drilling so they can sell more of this filthy ass shit to Asia. You know, anyone thinking that Canada is doing a goddamn thing uh, to, to limit its carbon footprint uh, by some fucking little carbon tax and shutting down a few coal-fired power plants, pull your head out of your ass. Not that anyone here uh, is believing that bullshit for one minute. Despite the urgency of the report, Canada remains mired in a political battle over its climate policy. Hmm, I'm not going to waste my time uh, on this goddamn carbon tax uh, bullshit. Uh, let's get back to reality. Under a scenario in which global emissions are dramatically reduced, Average temperatures will rise only three degrees across the country by 2100. Uh huh. But if countries, including Canada, fail to act aggressively, increases of seven to nine degrees, and I'm assuming they're talking about Celsius since this is The Guardian talking about, uh, about Canada, increases of seven to nine degrees Celsius are likely, and the Arctic faces the prospect of 11 degrees of warming. So, under the report's worst case scenario, 
the risk of deadly heat waves increases tenfold, bringing with it droughts and forest fires. Western Canada has already grappled with two years of record forest fire seasons. The risk of major rain events also doubles, meaning cities will be inundated with catastrophic urban flooding. Huh. Access to critical sources of fresh water will also be constrained, due in large part to reduced winter snowfall, which in turn becomes a source of clean water when the snowpack melts. Many of the previously documented effects, melting permafrost, disappearing sea ice, and glacial retreat are only set to intensify in the coming years. Uh, this is Elizabeth Bush, climate scientist advisor at Environment Canada, quote, we are already seeing the effects of widespread warming in Canada. It is clear the science supports the fact that adapting to climate change is an imperative. Urgent action is needed to reduce emissions. Thank you very much, The Guardian, for pointing that out. And uh, so as long as we're over there up in that general, uh, I'm going to go back to the story I had chosen for the We Are So Fucked headline before I talked to this guy from Canada, and he put me onto that story. This is the one that I had already picked out from Canada to the shithole state of Alaska. You, would you go get that squirrely like that? So what is going on? All right, no barking. What is going on uh, in the Bering Sea this week? Satellite photos show how pitiful ice cover is in the Arctic right now. Happy early spring! This is the time of year that Arctic sea ice often reaches its greatest size, freezing over the vast northern ocean. But in 2019, this ice cover, called the maximum ice extent, is the meager ice extent, particularly in the usual, the usually ice-clad Bering Sea. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration released a comparison of Bering and Chukchi sea ice in 2014, which was the last normal year, versus the maximum sea ice extent this year. As you can see in these photos here on this story, where there is supposed to be ice, there is now great open ocean months ahead of schedule. It is the lowest sea ice extent on record for the Bering Sea right now. Today is the lowest sea ice extent on record for the Bering Sea, you know, for this time of year, if not uh, for any time of year. In the greater Arctic, as we were just talking about in that last story, 2019 tied for the seventh lowest maximum ice extent in four decades of satellite records. This is part of a now unquestionable wide-scale planetary trend. The Arctic is the fastest warming region on Earth. A month ago, the Bering Sea forewarned of a profoundly low maximum sea ice extent. The waters in the Bering Strait were already nearly ice-free, though scientists expected some of that ice to grow as more favorable weather, pat weather patterns set in. But a month later, the ice is gone. Huh. Imagine that. What's more, 
the ice should be here for months longer. This is Lars, Lars Kalashek, climate scientist uh, from the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research. Quote, there should be ice here until May. Hmm, do you think so? Though NOAA is studying the exact causes for the record low sea ice, Arctic sea ice today is getting hit on multiple fronts. The warming ocean plays <coughs> an outsized role. Specifically, as more ice melts, there's less bright ice cover to reflect the sun. Instead, the dark ocean absorbs more heat, warming the region even more, like my chest is on fire. Then, of course, there's warming of the atmosphere. In March 2019, extremely high temperatures stoked by a combination of weather events and longer-term climate change blanketed Alaska breaking all time and daily records around the state. It was the warmest March on record for nearly all of Alaska. Dead Horse Alaska, I love that name, Dead Horse Alaska hit a whopping 40 degrees Fahrenheit above normal this week and every day this week. Uh, has been more than 30 degrees Fahrenheit uh, above normal in Dead Horse, Alaska. And exacerbating matters are storms in the Bering Sea, which roll through and batter whatever sea ice there is left. There will be little to no sea ice before the onset of summer, allowing the sea to stock itself with even more heat before the warm season, noted Rick Toman, a climate specialist for the Alaska Center for Climate Assessment from the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. Meanwhile, after a long, sun-drenched summer, the melted Arctic reaches its lowest sea ice extent or minimum in late September. This year promises to fit the trend. The 12 lowest ice extents on record have all occurred in the last 12 years. This is Jeremy Mathis from NOAA. Quote, the changes in the Arctic are happening faster than they are happening anywhere else on the rest of the planet. <sighs> but anyway, I'm glad to say, see that at least in the great state of Texas, it no longer is the same temperature uh, as it is in Alaska today, and I guess we're heading to close to 90 degrees uh, here in the next couple of days in, uh, in Texas. Uh, goodbye, Arctic temperatures. Anyway, I have got to wrap up today's We Are So Fucked headline of the day in Girl Scout cookie time here on the planet. And the little dog and I, we need to head to the Harry Butts Super Supermarket, the Super Harry Butts, to uh, pack in supplies to survive the next week in the end times. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can under the chemtrail streaked skies oops the contrail streaked skies good lord i gotta get out of here and pick my snow peas my snow peas have absolutely loved this cold snap and uh but it will be 90 degrees in a couple of days and that will be the end of the snow pea crop but i see my lark spur and my poppies are getting ready to bust out all over 
here on this gorgeous day in the end times. Harry Butts calls and I must answer. Bye guys.